All right. Well, thanks everybody for coming today. Uh, we do have a special guest, Nadine Gilkison. She is from Franklin Township, right? School. Yes. Okay, it's down a little bit southeast side of Indianapolis. Um, Nadine and I have, gosh, we've known each other for a few years here. Uh, Bill and I have gone to multiples of her sessions at some of the conferences. Um, she was at the Lafayette e-learning conference last year. Is that correct? Yep. <clears throat> okay, Lafayette e-learning conference last year. Um, she's been one of my motivations for getting into uh, playing with slides a little bit more as well. And today she's going to give you a kind of like a little intro, uh, a little bit similar, but only better than what I did last week. So, um, <laughs> yeah, at thumbs up from Abby. So, <laughs> um, so <laughs> the best way to do this, Nadine is going to end up sharing her screen and and uh, she, the easiest thing to do is for you to actually go out of grid mode because when she shares her screen, it's going to be one of those little small boxes as well. So you'll want to, um, you will want to go out of grid mode and then probably pin the screen that she shares for every, um, that way you can see it in a full uh, screen there for you. So um, if you have questions, please put them in the chat. I'm going to moderate that as we go through here. And um, don't hesitate to, you know, just, um, you know, either, you know, wave or put in chat if you have a question, because then we can kind of pause and answer any questions that you have. So um, with that, we'll go ahead and get started with Nadine. So Nadine, if you'd like to say hello to everybody, maybe give a, another quick little update on yourself. Um, and then sure. I'm free to share your screen. Sure. All right. So um, as Kyle said, I'm Nadine Gilkison. I recognize some of your faces because I know I did some training at the elementary uh, for some of the grades. So um, like Kyle said, I'm the district technology integration specialist at Franklin Township. So I do what Kyle does. Um, our district is just a lot larger than what Delphi is. Um, a little bit more background about me. I'm a, a Google certified uh, teacher, trainer, and last fall I became a Google Certified Innovator. Um, and I am working on a project with dyslexia. So if there's anybody that is sped in here or you're concerned about the rollout of the state laws with dyslexia, you can also talk to me about that at some point. Um, basically in a nutshell, that's me. Um, my passion for HyperDocs started, gosh, probably five years ago now. Um, and it was when I first started out reading the HyperDoc handbook. And um, I'll kind of dive into that when I start to share my screen here in a moment. And I'll give you an overview of how I got started. So when I share my screen, um, there's going to be a link at the bottom, because I'm not gonna have the presentation in present mode just yet, so that that way you guys can get access to the presentation that I'm gonna be presenting from. So I'll be going through it live right now, but then, um, and even Kyle, if you wanna throw it in the chat, that's fine too. So let me go ahead and get on here. All right, so you guys should, whoops, let me go back here. Um, you guys should be able to see at the bottom, it says tinyurl.com forward slash hyperboot. And I've, I've presented on HyperDocs a lot of different ways. Um, the presentation that I'm doing for you guys today typically can even be like a full day workshop that I do, but I'm going to condense it down to an hour. Um, but I, what I decided to do was go ahead and keep all of the slides so that that way you guys can go in and you can explore. Okay. Um, Kyle, were you able to go ahead and toss that into the chat? Yes, it is in the chat. So if you uh, want to click on that, then you guys can have that open on in another tab if you like. Okay. And then don't forget, if you want to see um, what Nadine is presenting on her screen, full screen, make sure you uh, click out of the grid view. And then you might want to pin that screen that shows her, um, that actually shows her screen if you want it, so it's not bouncing all around. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and 
get started here. So again, that just gives you a little bit of background about me and what all the types of presentations that I've done. Um, these ladies that are pictured are actually the authors of the HyperDoc Handbook. So Kelly Hilton, Lisa Highfill, and Sarah Landis. So just so you know, their job um, is similar to what Kyle and I do, but they're located out in California. They actually are at a district that has about 15,000 students in California, and all three of them are tech coaches within the same district. So um, I, it always helps if you know their story and why they decided to create the book. So it gives you kind of a backstory of, of knowing how this whole thing got started. So what happened was um, they ended up in their school district. They were going to have a lot of carts sent out. They weren't going to be officially one to one yet, but they were going to be what they call cart saturated. Um, and at the time, whenever I happened to stumble upon their book on Amazon, I started reading the cover, um, you know, the cover information. And I thought, oh, my gosh, this is exactly like us. So they had these grandiose expectations of, wow, you know, we're going to have so many devices. Teachers are going to be doing all kinds of things. And then when they walked by classrooms, what they noticed were um, that the teachers were using the Chromebooks in the fashion that you see there. So the reality was it was just a bunch of consumption sites. And when I say that, they're not like upset with the teachers because we all know how it is. It, you're going to use technology with what you're the most comfortable with. And so if a teacher doesn't know any different, then they're going to go with, OK, what can I do? put the kids on so that I can meet with small groups and I can do other things that's going to keep them engaged and busy. OK, um, the problem with that is that it's not having like higher level skills. The students aren't creating on a Chromebook. And so they said, you know, there has to be a better solution for this. So that's when they came up with the term hyperdocs. Now, keep in mind, the book was the original book was written about six years ago. And at that time, when they started out, um, they were coming up with a concept of digital lesson design. So they thought, well, we need to come up with a whole packaging solution for what this looks like. And when they first started creating them, they were all made out of Google Docs. Hence why you see hyper docs. Um, don't let it be confused with the hyperlink. It's so much more than that, and we'll go more in depth. So what they felt like were the strong components of a digital lesson are having those three um, components, your content, the technology, and the pedagogy. What they were seeing in the classroom was like somebody was really good at one piece of it, but having all three um, was not really you know, what teachers were focusing on. So when they came up with this digital lesson design, they said, you know, it, it's kind of like a package where it's going to have all of the things that we want students uh, to be able to accomplish when they're on a device. So um, there, there's some decisions when you're thinking about building a HyperDoc, and this is the most basic version of a HyperDoc. So they said you want the students to explore and you want them to explain and you want them to apply what it is that they've learned. And I'll go more in depth of giving you examples. I know on here it says like curate a collection of resources. It doesn't necessarily have to be a video, um, but it could be an article and so on. So they're exploring a topic. Then the next section is um, basically, how is the student going to explain the lesson objective um, with a favorite web tool. Or I always give options where students could just type in the box. But this is also where you can have opportunities for collaboration. And we'll take a look at some samples of that. Apply then means you've explored the topic, you've been explaining the topic. The ultimate is that application. And if you can prove to someone else that you can show that depth of knowledge through application, then that's the highest form. So I, when, when I have talked before to the three authors, I'm actually pretty close with all three of them. Um, they, kind of, they kind of have helped me change the way that I present HyperDocs because they said that sometimes teachers may not understand what it looks like until you show them a before and after. 
So I'm going to show you a couple of examples. One will be primary, and then on the next slide, it'll be secondary. <clears throat> so on the, on the left-hand side here would be if a primary teacher was doing um, the concept of the boss ER, in the classroom, they might just pass out a worksheet. And so then the student's going to be cutting and pasting and adding things in. So that would be the traditional method. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up. I'm going to share this tab now. I want to make sure you guys can see it. Is it loading the boss ER, Kyle? Yes. Okay, good. It is. Um, so this is kind of the after of what it looks like. And to be honest, this was the very first HyperDoc that I made um, several years ago. So I took that concept of explore, explain, apply, and I was trying to think of what would that look like for our youngest learners? And having access to um, a template, I felt like was key. And um, in a little bit, I'll show you where, you know, there's all kinds of templates. Don't feel like that you have to use the templates that I've already made. The people that uh, designed HyperDocs, they have their own templates. There's nobody saying like, you need to use a certain one. Um, it's just the terms, the explore, explain, apply, which have been really good. And honestly, in this remote learning, it's really helped. So we felt like for our primary learners, if everybody was using the same template, then we weren't having to reteach the template each time. So when I went into the classroom and I walked the students through, because again, if you've never ever done one, the kid needs to know how, to, how this works. So I said, well, I want all the kids to click on slide two. And it says, you know, I want you to watch the videos below. Now I stress to the teachers that when they're doing this, that um, the teacher had already taught what a boss ER was. They'd already done the concept. This isn't your first run of the topic. This is picking up and like adding that supplemental once the teacher has done the initial lesson on whatever the topic is. So these are to review the concept. But one of the things I want you to pay attention to is that I talk a lot about student choice. So in a hyperdoc, one of the key elements is that there has to be student choice involved. And that even comes down to videos. If I only put one video on this slide, then I'm telling the kid, look, I know better than you. And this is the only video about the boss ER. We all know that's not true. On YouTube, you can find a bajillion of these. So pick out two or three, and then now you're letting the student choose which one um, that they get to use. Once they've done that concept, then they're gonna move on to explain. And it says, explain what you've learned about the boss ER. And notice that I have several choices. Now, keep in mind, I know that might look overwhelming, okay? When I make a hyperdoc for my teachers, I don't know which tools that they're using in the classroom. So I always like to have many different options. When you use a HyperDoc, one of the coolest things about them is that if you're sitting here, like maybe you're watching mine and you're a primary teacher and you're going, well, darn, I already did Boss ER or I've got that coming up. I want to use that. That's the beauty of a HyperDoc is that it is a free sharing platform. You're allowed to use anybody's HyperDocs. Um, you can just go to the word file and make a copy. And then you can customize it as you need. So if you're like, look, I don't need half of these things on here, Nadine. I just need a couple options. Because remember, you at least want to have two. Um, so you have the beauty to do that. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more um, about the sharing and all of that. On the explain, I always add an option for a text box. Because not everything needs to be all fancy schmancy and link out to a flip grid and all of that. Sometimes... The kids just want to type it in there. So why not give them that option? So the next phase is apply. So now the kid has to show me what they know. So on here, think back to before, it was just simply like a cut and paste and the kid was doing that. This time they're having to look at the image and the kid has to actually fill in the choices to create the word and then they type the word in there. So I actually have two different slides of that. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, that's kind of like a digital worksheet. And you're right. This piece, this one component by itself would be calling this nothing but a digitized worksheet. 
But when you layer in the other slides with it, that's what sets it apart from being just a digital worksheet. Um, so when I get to the last slide here, the ultimate is not only student choice, but did you allow the student to create something? If you have no way for that student to express in their own way to create, then you can't truly call it a hyperdoc. Um, on the hyperdoc website, they have a difference between like a multimedia text set and a hyperdoc. And basically what I tell people is a lot of times teachers are really good about finding videos and adding in um, interactives, but they really struggle with the create part. And that's where Kyle and I, you know, like that's what our job is for. We're there to help you come up with what could creating look like. So I gave some options on here. Um, if the kid did a book snap of a picture book and they highlighted the bossy R words, um, maybe, they, maybe they create their own game. Um, they take like shoots and ladders or a sorry game and turn it into a where you have to say the bossy R word. Maybe they write a story that has 10 bossy R words in it. Um, now, one thing with that um, that I want to say is that differentiation is built in. Uh, some teachers stress out about, oh my gosh, does a kid need to get all of this totally done? And they don't. Um, it's, it's all about the review. But if you have someone that needs the extra practice, they're going to be spending more time on the explore and the explain and the apply. But your high achieving learners are going to spend more time on the create. So I wanted to I wanted you to know that you have that um, that you have that flexibility. So that's what it looks like in primary. Um, but I think secondary is where you guys are really going to benefit from this. So Scott Padway is actually also a tech coach with Lisa Highfill and all of them, but he specializes more with secondary. And so when he started going through the HyperDoc process, um, this is actually a link to his original lesson, which I'll pull it up here. Hold on just a second. OK, so now I'm on this tab. Uh, this is what his original lesson looked like. And I don't know about you, but it's it's a little dry. Um, I mean, it's got it's got the points in here of what the kids need to do, but there's no visual whatsoever. And it's not really eye catching um, and not to say that you have to go overboard, but there's different ways to package that lesson. Um, so he then made like a first rever revision and this is what it looked like. So I'm going to show this one. So he started out with, oh, well, I could probably clean that up a little bit and make it easier for students to know how to organize things. Um, so it's a little better. Um, but the ultimate, I want to find his final product. We're going to share this tab instead. Um, this is the exact same lesson that he did before. And now by him putting it into slides and adding in these visuals, um, you guys have links to this on the presentation, but you're seeing exactly what he's asking them to do. It's just that he packaged it in a more user-friendly way. So I'm hoping that by you guys seeing these examples, that that helps you to understand um, what it is that what it is that you know a hyperdoc looks like with the before and the after. Um, I'm going to pause for a minute as I go to the next slide. Like, obviously, I can't see the chat right now, but if there's anybody that has questions, feel free to let me know. Um, Abby had a good question. She said, uh, "These are Google Slides. Is that basically the same thing as a hyperdoc instead of just doing it in a Google Doc?" Yes, that is correct. Um, I and everyone gets to choose how they want to do it. Um, I actually prefer to make mine in Google Slides. And the reason why is because it's easier to add the visual aspect. I feel like in a Google Doc, I can kind of spruce it up, but it doesn't. I, I don't get like the visual feel that I want. Um, and for instance, videos. I can actually directly embed a YouTube video. So rather than kicking the student out to YouTube, I could embed it directly on the slide. So especially for young learners, we try to make it so everything is like the package, like it's all inside of the Google slide. 
Um, I won't pull up this one, but this one is okay. actually with docs where they did, um, this was a worksheet and then they turned it into a hyperdoc. So that's another one um, that you guys can take a look at. I'm gonna go ahead and go um, past that slide because again, that was from when I was doing the full day. Um, did anybody else have questions before I go on? Uh, let's see, anybody raising their hands or want to unmute themselves? Do you have a question? So far, I think we're okay. Good. All right. Um, so this infographic was created by someone and they were talking about what a hyperdoc is and what it is not. So I, I just want to always point out that um, it's not a digital version of a worksheet. It's not that substitution level. It's supposed to be more interactive, personalized and engaging. Um, so that helps you when you're doing that. Um, now, when I'm going to actually skip over this one um, and I'm going to start to take us into, oh, I wanted to show you this. So, because um, well, in a moment here, I'm going to let you do some shopping because I love how Lisa Heifel refers to it that way. She's like, teachers need time to shop. Like there's tons of hyperdocs that are already made out there, but understanding um, you don't know what you want until you start shopping. So in a few minutes, we'll do that. Um, but I also want to pull up this document. So Chromebooks, and I know it says Chromebooks during literacy, but I want to let you know, like when I would go out and I would help our teachers and I would start talking about hyperdocs, they were kind of like, yeah, 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 I'm good. And then um, they would ask questions about what to do on the Chromebooks and Google Classroom. And I started to discover that there really is this continuum. So I would get teachers and I'm going to um, escape out of the present mode if it'll go out here, it's being a little picky. There we go. I wanted you to see that on the sides, I've got other messages. So when I start to ask teachers, if you, I'll say, how are you using it? And if a teacher tells me, well, I put a link to a website, um, that's what I'm doing. I'm putting a link to something. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. Um, now I would consider that at the at the lowest level of using Google Classroom, but I'm glad that you're getting going with it. So you're at phase one and phase one is not bad, but what I would remind my teachers is we don't want to stay at phase one the whole year. We want to dabble in these other levels. So the next step up from, uh, from just putting a link is having uh, graphic organizers. So if you have a link to a graphic organizer that you want a student to fill out, that to me is more of that digital worksheet, okay? Um, so you're not at a level one, you're a step up. In um, at level three, once we're getting into that, that means you're already starting to think about how can I go beyond that digital worksheet? And that's when you've got multimedia and student choice are starting to appear. So if you're using Flipgrid, if you're using Seesaw um, or something like that, where the kids get to create and record a voice or something, then you're doing good. You're, you're at phase three. Phase four would be the hyperdoc. So that means that the hyperdoc is a mix of one, two, and three. You might have a graphic organizer. You may have a link to a Flipgrid. Oh, and you might have a link to an article in there too. Um, and the biggest thing that I want to share with you is I don't want you to feel like that it's like, oh, I want to get to number four and just stay there. You want to be like when we talk about SAMR and tech integration, you want to be kind of swimming laps. Nobody's saying that you want to go, OK, kids, I'm going to give you a hyperdoc, then a hyperdoc, then a hyperdoc, <laughs> because then they're hyperdoc to death. So especially when you guys are designing, you know, e-learning activities, Keep that in mind as you're designing your lesson, kind of look at that continuum and kind of ask yourself, ooh, well, that was a level two. And if I'm only doing a level two every week, then I could see how that could get frustrating for the students. Um, but this kind of lets me know when a teacher is ready, because if you're only putting a link or you're only doing a graphic organizer, jumping into hyperdocs, you're probably going to need Kyle's help to get you going, which is perfectly fine. You know, I know that he's he's talked to you guys about, you know, co-collaborating on them before. Um, but I definitely wanted to preface that so that you guys know all of that information. Um, I'm going to go back to present mode on here. 
And uh, I do, Nadine, I do have a quick question sure. from the chat. Um, <clears throat> I gave them my recommendations, but uh, they're asking about you know um, what fonts or where can you get the cool fonts, but also um, can you add background music like in a movie? What, what's your suggestion for that? I know there's a couple of ways um, that you can get to, um, that you can do the background music. I mean, you know how you can insert audio now in, in Google Slides, you can do that. Um, I just, I know like for you to be able to find the, the audio clip that you want, I think that depends upon which audio, you know, the audio file that you're looking for. Um, I can send you guys to, um, uh, I can send you a link to, when people were asking about the fonts and all of those kinds of things, this past Monday, I did a live um, PD session on tips to design uh, digital content. And it has where I get my fonts, and how to add audio and all of that. It's all in there. So before we get done today, I'll throw a link to that in the chat. Um, and also I, uh, on Mondays is when I'm doing my live PD. So if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is my name, just my first and last name, um, then you can already see the sessions that I've recorded. Um, so feel free to do that as well. On uh, this slide where it says explore, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, in just a few moments, I'm gonna give you guys like five minutes to poke around and take a look at things. This link will take you out to sample primary hyperdocs if you wanna take a look at some of those. This one is a link to secondary ones. On the next slide, is a link to my hyperdoc collection. So again, if you tap here, it's going to take you out to it. So I think what's gonna help you is go out, find something that you're looking for, um, and then once you've had about five minutes to kind of shop around, then, um, then I wanna move forward and we can have some discussion. So I'll stop sharing. And I just wanna make sure that you guys are able to click on something. Was everybody able to get to the presentation? Let me see. I put it in the chat. Hopefully it worked out. It worked out for me. Okay. <clears throat> I can either play a five minute song or I can sing for five minutes. What do you guys want? <laughs> they're tuning you out, Kyle. <laughs> I know. That's good. That's I good. Thought, okay. While they're shopping, I'm gonna put <laughs> like some links in there. Okay, perfect. So that, that way. Um, I did I did put your um your link to your hyperdocs in there. Oh, okay. And then I put the Facebook group, and that's about it. So All right. Far. That's fine. I'll go out and find some resources to toss <clears throat> in there. And if okay. anybody has questions as you're shopping, feel free to unmute yourself and ask away. Um, I do know that Nick has been, Nick is on here, so he's been uh, working, creating his, which is pretty neat. So, um, I mean, and he and I have been in constant contact. You know, <laughs> it's the same way I felt uh, when I started creating them is I wanted them to look as nice and pretty as Nadine's, and that's very difficult when you first start. So it's, it's kind of baby steps as you go through it. So, um, you know, you don't have to make something that looks like it's professionally made from a, a publisher that, you know, you're selling for, um, you know, to fund your quarantine hobbies or whatever, but, um, <laughs> You know, just start simple and then just kind of work on it as you go as you go through. And and definitely if you collaborate, that's going. It's good to get some feedback. All right. So I added a link to my YouTube channel, and then I'm going to put a direct link to the one that was about um, the video that had the. Uh, design tips in here as well. Oh, I did add um, the HyperDoc from, I think from their website that has like the different ed tech tools for each yeah. of the different things. Oh my gosh, I love having that open as a resource when I'm creating also. 
Yeah, that is a good one. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to add the next link in there. Gotcha. Okie dokie. I'll give you guys just a couple more minutes. This second one is the tips to design content digitally. And on that one, um, this coming Monday, I'm doing like a part two of that session because there's there were so many tips and I my sessions go for an hour and I couldn't fit it all in one. So <laughs> if you're interested in that, then you can do the part two um, on Monday. And I'll also throw, actually, so if when you go out to that YouTube link, what I've done is in the description of the YouTube video, it has a link to the Google Slides. So you can just click there and it'll take you out to the presentation, just so that you know. Cool. Okay. Appreciate it. All right, so hopefully everybody's had a chance to um, go ahead. Yes, Slides Mania is pretty cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that one's the bomb, yeah. <clears throat> He's made several templates for remote learning that you can use too. Um, but yeah, a lot of people are using her stuff for that. All right, I'm gonna go back to the presentation. So let me go back to here and have it pull up. Um, one thing that I wanted uh, to make sure that you knew, um, so like I said, you know, when you're sharing HyperDocs, there is the HyperDocs website, which pretty awesome. They um, just recently updated it and it's always been um, hyperdocs.co and they revamped the site over the weekend and it launched on Sunday and now they have tons of free PD. Like I know I'm doing the intro, but they have a bunch more um, courses on there that you can do and all of it's free uh, for right now. And then um, they'll, they want to encourage teachers that if you make a hyperdoc, it's like the give one, take one. So you get to a point where you start out making hyperdocs and you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to share this yet. So you're using a lot of other people's stuff and remixing it. But then when you, once you reach a phase that you're ready to start making some of your own, then you need to, you know, share back. You know, um, I was really happy that Kyle's been starting to make some for math and that's gone over really well. Um, and so I encourage you, you know, to do that as much as what you want. But the biggie is you cannot sell them. You're, this is not something that you're supposed to be, um, you know, putting on teachers pay teachers and then getting a big profit um, out of it. And I hate that I have to say this, but I've had people that have, made copies of mine and actually tried to sell them. <laughs> <laughs> and they forgot to take my name off of the corner. So it was pretty obvious that it wasn't their work. So it was pretty easy to get it taken down. Um, but I just always preface that, that I always add onto my HyperDocs now, the common, uh, the Creative Commons licensing. So that way it's very obvious um, and so I'm just encouraging you guys that as you start to make some, then keep that in mind. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, now I've got on here, explore some more. So as Kyle mentioned, there's a Facebook group and oh my gosh, I think it's up to like 20,000 people now globally. <laughs> yeah. um, and you can literally go out to the Facebook group. And a lot of times when I'm doing a PD, I'll say like, hey, what are you studying? And someone will go, oh, I'm studying the Civil War. So I'll type it in in the search bar of the Facebook group. And literally within like a half hour during my training, I go back and there's like 12 people that are like, here's mine. Here's mine. Oh, you can use mine. And when you open them up, you're like, oh, my gosh, like I can't believe somebody is letting me use this and it's totally free. Um, so I wanted you guys to know about that. This one, the Facebook group, honestly, has become the hot spot to find what you need. The authors are revamping. Um, they actually have another website that's Teachers Give Teachers, and they're updating it right now. So it's having some technical difficulties. So they keep directing everybody to go to the Facebook group. Um, if you tap the logo where it says Franklin Township, I'll go ahead and tap that. Um, as I said, the first year that I started rolling out HyperDocs, I was fortunate enough to be able to get time 
with my curriculum director that I got to meet with each grade level. And each one of our grade levels made um, hyperdocs that year that are based on the Indiana standards. All of these you guys are welcome to use. Um, now I will tell you that whenever you open it up, because I had several people email me this morning, I'm gonna open this up just so you get an idea. Um, I could have put all of this into a Google folder and just told all of the teachers, we'll go to this Google folder, you know, make a copy and whatnot. Well, the first time that I did the training, um, I realized, you know, everybody's at different abilities with Google and people were making a copy of the file, but it was going back into my file folder <laughs> and it was like a hot mess. So um, this is the method that I use now every time that I make hyperdocs or my teachers do. We make it in, we put a link to it on a Google Doc. So for instance, if you want this one that says consonant letter sounds, you tap on the cover here and down below is the link to the file. And then when it makes a copy, it doesn't go in Nadine's Google Drive, it definitely goes to yours. So um, if you were curious, I've just had several people wanting editing access to this Google Doc and I'm like, no, I don't want anybody messing with this. I just want you to click on the image and then go to the one that you want. So I just wanted you to know that those are out there. Um, and again, they're free to use if you want. Um, I wanted, let me see here. Nope, we're gonna go past this one too. Um, so on here it says, select a hyperdoc that you like and make a copy of it to remix. So when you get started, uh, when you get started and you're like, ooh, I'm ready for this one, um, the girls had said, rather than starting from scratch, from like just a blank Google slide, the easiest way for you to get started is find a hyperdoc that you like, make the copy, and then you're just basically gutting out the stuff that you don't want and replacing it with the stuff that you do want. So a good example of that would be the ones that Kyle has done because Kyle used one of the templates that I made, but he made it his own. So like he just used a few of the things that I had from my template, but then he went in and added his own backgrounds and all of those types of things. Um, so that's the best way to get started. Now on here, um, on the presentation, there's a link to a lot of different um, tools that you can use. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna actually walk you through this one. Um, I already have it open on another tab, but you can um, either open it now or you can just watch me and then we can talk about it. Uh, so let me find it here. Here we go. All right, so let me have it come up. So what I did was I made this slide deck to help out my teachers because um, it's hard, you know, like I'm helping out our district size is 10,000. So I've got over 500 teachers and I don't always have the time to stop what I'm doing to explain how to do a hyperdoc. So I do PD on your shoulder kind of over here. So that's why you see the little box there. And if, a, if you open this up and you're like, okay, I watched that PD that Nadine did and now I don't remember anything. Um, then you can go back and you can watch this video and it's just literally me going through all of this again. So a lot of times this helps teachers because I'm trying to help you out here. So when you're doing the explore, it could be YouTube, it could be Learn Zillions, Power My Learning, CK12. If you have an Ed Puzzle, you could put a link to your Ed Puzzle there or it could just be a Screencastify video of you just teaching something. Um, that all of those can be the components for Explore. On Explain, I've got, you know, the most popular options on here. Again, I always have a paper pencil. Flipgrid is popular. Padlet is not as much just because it costs so much money now, but I just left it on there. Seesaw is a great option for that as well. Um, so that gives you some ideas of what you could do for Explain. The biggest one that I get questions about is the apply. They're like, okay, I, I'm not sure what I should be putting for apply. So here's option one is a link to an interactive site. So if you like quizzes, Kahoot, Quizlet, 
uh, flashcard factory from Pear Deck, you know, any types of those tools, that's what I call an interactive site. Um, so you can have that. You can have like, I usually put like the logo for the tool and then it links out to the one that you want them to do. And again, I know you can go ahead and add that on your Google Classroom, but a lot of this is about packaging. So that way the kid has everything that they need all within the slide deck. So an interactive site is a consumption site. And this is where I'm trying to let teachers know it's still okay to use those in moderation and mixing it with other items. Option two is teacher created. And I'm gonna slide over here and I have an example here of an apply. This was made by Andy Rotes, who is a fifth grade teacher at South Creek Elementary. And I was working with our fifth grade and he was doing one on math, on radius and diameter. So this is flat out like a digital worksheet. He's giving them problems and the kids are gonna actually type in their answer. So people say, well, which one do you like, Nadine? And my preference is both. I say, why not have two slides for apply? Have one that takes you out to the quizzes, the Kahoot or whatever interactive. And then the next one has something where you're asking the students um, to fill in the blank or move boxes or do something like that. That's just my opinion on that one. Then the ultimate is the create. We don't wanna forget about the create. Um, and I'll put this in present mode so you can see it a little bit better. So in the beginning, if I've got a teacher that's super techie, then this is where having a choice board, now I have a really complex choice board there, but you could have just a choice board that has three options like you saw in the primary one that I pulled up. But you can get it as advanced as what I've got there. I will tell you that hands down, when teachers say to me, you know, well, I need a create option and I don't know what to do. I always tell our teachers, have you used Seesaw? And a lot of people think like, oh, well, we use Google Classroom or we use something else. And I'm like, okay, nobody's telling you that you can't use them together. Um, Seesaw has a free, um, you know, a teacher can use it as a free version. And when you get to that create, it has a built-in choice board within Seesaw. It's asking the kid, do you want to take a photo and then talk over the top of it? Do you want to take a photo and annotate over the top of it? Do you want to do a video? Do you want to do a video and then annotate it? You know, there's lots of different options there. And so what I have found that helps my teachers is that instead of me giving a barrage of different tools that they could learn, I've just found that the easiest one to get started with is Seesaw. Um, and again, like if you guys are stressed because you don't want to throw something on your plate or on your parents' plate this time of the school year, I get that. Start out with a basic uh, choice board like I did in the other one I showed you. And then, um, you know, for next year, whenever you want to try to roll out a HyperDoc, then try to roll out, you know, the components of Seesaw. Um, you notice that I have black X's over some of the parts. This was pretty cool. I was doing a PD with a staff and the fifth grade teacher, Andy, actually did this with his fifth graders where he had certain ones X'd out. He's like, nope, they either get the camera roll, the photo or the video. And all of a sudden at the back of the PD, I had a kindergarten teacher go, oh my gosh, why didn't I think of that? Because she put an image of the choice board, but she basically like the kindergartners were seeing all of it. And she was like, it was overload. And so now what she does is at the beginning of the year, she puts X's over everything but the photo. And then once the kids get used to that, then she, as the year goes on, she adds in more choices. And that's one thing too. I know I'm saying student choice, student choice. Well, obviously we need to build into that. If you're gonna jump in, that's why I'm saying, if you jumped into a giant choice board, that would be overloaded for you and for the student. Um, if that makes sense. Um, so I, I definitely wanted to make sure that you guys had a chance to see that. Um, I'm going to stop uh, presenting there. And um, I wanted to see, I don't know, like if we've got other comments or if you guys have other questions for me so far after, you know, getting an, getting a chance to actually see what they look like. Does this help you? Does that help folks? And I have no clue what all you teach. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a great mix 
um, uh, let's see where we have second, first grade all the way up through high school. So cool. we've got a, and we have all different subjects. We have special education, we have specials classes, we have band project lead way, we have math, English. Um, we've got a great collection here. So it um, nice. looks like Abby's got a question. Yes, Abby. Yeah, I think I've kind of started with the Google Slides. That's why I've been doing all during it e-learning. Mine is mainly finding all of the stuff, the the graphics and all of that where I'm at. Yeah, because I don't know where I just get on, you know, <clears throat> Google search something that I want, a vi uh, image of this and put it on. So I'd like more of the interactive moving parts and the animated GIFs. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. What would be the baby steps? I saw that pop up. The baby steps would be um, take a lesson that you know that you have coming up and try it. You can do it just as like three slides. You could just do explore, explain, apply, have it something very simple. But it should be that you're not trying to, you all know that there's certain lessons that you're like, okay, I'm, I'm really strong at this one. I've got a lot of good content because there's some standards that are gonna lend themselves to that you're gonna find the information that you need for your HyperDoc. And there's others that you're like, yeah, this probably wouldn't be good for that. So think about what you have coming up. And if it's you know a week down the road or two weeks down the road, you know, do just that basic template, explore, explain, apply. You can even use the one I just pulled up, make a copy of it and yank off all the other junk and then plug in what you want. Um, that's where I would start. Um, and again, Abby, if you watch that other, if you look uh -huh. at my presentation and you, um, and you watch that YouTube video, then, um, you're going to get all the stuff that you need. We go through images and all of that. Okay. When you create your Google slides, do you lock certain stuff in place that the kids can't like I, I've been making Google slides and then giving them a copy through Google classroom so they can yeah. manipulate their own. Yeah. Um, and I know like Kyle has been doing the edit, the slide master. He's been doing that for his hyperdocs. And I think Kyle, don't you have a template that you said that you were going to send them or something? You're muted though, buddy. Sorry, I have a dog and a child that's, I'm in the garage and I have a seven year old that just got in the car and said that's where she wants to play. So <laughs> um, I, and I have some different ones that I can share. I don't, I don't have, and I would, I'd really kind of start off of from Nadine's um, templates. So um, she, and she has great templates with slides and then the HyperDocs website has some great templates too. Um, it's really just kind of, start creating for me is kind of start creating and then adapt it once i start seeing others uh, when you and how they're built. when you do that edit the slide master um that makes everything stay locked into place and kyle oh, yeah. do like another session on that with you guys if you want to understand that um now what mm -hmm. i do is that if i have certain items that i don't want kids to delete or move I actually create a slide and then I save that slide as a background. So that way then they can't move things. Um, now a lot of mine, I don't have it locked down because I'm doing it as a model lesson for a teacher and I don't know what they're going to want to keep and what they want. Um, and so I actually don't lock it down. And honestly, we've been using them long enough now. And if I'm in there, um, I just had to train the kids. They're like, oh, crud, I got rid of something. I'm like, control Z brings it back. <laughs> and then yeah. the teacher will be like, oh, my gosh, they deleted like five or six slides. What do I do? So then I just taught teachers go into the student's file because in Google Classroom, you can open up that kid's copy and go in and go to file uh, version history. And if, if it really gets bad, then I just set it back to the original on version history. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's something that you'll have to, um, you know, that it's just one of those things that you go through and then they figure it out. But if you're absolutely terrified of it, then lock the background. You can easily do that. Okay. Did we have another um, question? Yep, got a good question from Ashlyn. Are you able to pull up the chat? Yeah. Do students okay. do all the work on the slide doc then submit as their full presentation? You have the choice. So teachers kind of, 
how people use um, hyperdocs, it's kind of a mix of both. So you can make a short hyperdoc where you want them to like, hey, you're going to complete the whole thing and then you're going to turn it in at the end of the week. Or it could be um, that you're saying, I want you to do slide two and you're going to turn in slide two um, out of that because like you don't need the full slide deck back. You just need <laughs> an item. Um, so what I've had students do and what teachers have had them do is take a screenshot of the slide that has their work and turn that in. If it's like, cause there's people that you'll find, there's people that have made novel hyperdocs. Like if you're in the high yeah. school level, there's giant hyperdocs out there. But again, you need to search it cause there's a ton that have already been made. Um, and um, that's where you're gonna find that you don't need to reinvent the wheel um, to make those things. I don't know who in here, if you have someone that's like a history teacher at the high school level, but um, like junior high or high school. But I always tell Kyle about Amanda Sandoval. She's a history teacher out in California and she's got a ton of amazing hyperdocs that are out there. Um, so let them do that. So there's different options when someone was asking about collecting um, work. I'm going to throw in here. Uh, real quick, I need to find it um, in here. I'm going to throw in a couple other things because I know we're starting to get short on time. If you guys have other questions, feel free to either type it in or just, you know, unmute yourself. I just wanted to throw in some stuff for you. It's just pulling up. Oh. yeah that font meme is not awesome kyle did you start checking yeah yes yeah, so i started looking at it yesterday um this link in it's called fontmeme.com. you can basically search for about anything but they have all kinds of really cool uh themed fonts that you can that you can use so they have like different movies uh comedy electronics they have like handwriting all kinds of um things they have, they have some really neat fonts that are available yeah the people that are wanting the cool fonts go to that go to font yeah. you're gonna geek out by that <clears throat> um i added in here i have all kinds of free covid resources i kind of organized it the same way that i do the hyperdocs um but i'll go back to presenting and I'm pulling this up because I thought you guys might want to, um, you might want to use some of these. So what our district did was we decided to use the HyperDoc concept for our e-learning lessons. So if you want an e-learning template, um, then that's what this first one is. It'll take you out to it and you can customize it. And I've had people from elementary, middle school, and high school use that template across the country. Um, I've got math e-learning templates, guided reading. If anyone is related arts in here, I got a ton. There's art, PE, music, library. All of our teachers um, said it was fine to make their plans open. So that's basically a link to all of our plans that are out there for that. Um, Nadine, I just wanted to make sure that you knew that. Nadine, are those just for primary or are those secondary as well? You mean for the related arts? What you just showed us, yeah. Um, the template is for anybody. I mean, like any of you can, like, basically, what I'm saying is you can use, I, you know, how I have my hyperdoc templates. You can right. use any of these and morph it into whatever subject area that you want. Okay. So feel free so to do not, any of it. I'm okay. So they're not specifically just primary or anything like no, that. No. Uh, I mean, now the ones that you're going to open that are related arts, it says like K through five. But okay. I still think that if you're middle school or high school, you could open it up and see what we've done. And now what we've done in our district is we've packaged it. So, like, if you're the art teacher, we didn't want the art teacher to have like five slides. So we told each related arts teacher to put their items on one slide for the week. So that way it was easier to package it for our weekly e-learning. Um, so if you're middle school or high school, I would see splitting it up, like doing three slides 
So you would have one slide that's mm -hmm. explore. Um, and I think I modified the, I didn't keep it the total traditional hyperdoc because I called it like apply, what did I call it? Explore, apply, extend. Because we wanted to offer opportunities for people that said, well, I want more. I already did these core things, but what else could I, what else could my child do? So I just wanted you guys to know that you're welcome to use any of that stuff too. Awesome. So did this help you guys get kind of like <clears throat> a head start on that? Definitely go out to the website. I don't know if you put that link in there yet, Kyle. Oh, whoops. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah go out to the HyperDocs website because um, my, you know, hearing, hearing about HyperDocs for me is one thing, but if you get the chance to hear from Lisa Highfill, um, out of the three HyperDoc ladies, she's kind of like the queen of it. And she, I could listen to her talk all day. She's amazing. So take advantage of the free opportunities that they have going on because, uh, and if there's anybody in here that is secondary, I can tell you I've got a health teacher at my high school that has made HyperDocs. I've got biology teacher that has made HyperDocs and I can send an email to Kyle that has mm. links to their samples. Um, I'm trying to think who else. <clears throat> got a couple others um, that I can awesome. send your way. If you're like, look, I teach this subject and I just can't wrap my head around what it would look like. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, that'd be great. We do have a health teacher on here. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, my health <laughs> teacher like rocks it. She awesome. has made several, so you can use all of her stuff. So you'll like that. Even better. Yeah. Well, all right. I all right. Well, thank you very much, Nadine. Greatly appreciate your your help, your expertise. Um, if you guys are on Twitter, you know, follow her on um, Twitter at Nadine Gilkison, or um, like I would highly recommend joining that Facebook group and Nadine you know, we'll comment in there, uh, you know, weekly also. And so you can also, um, you know, uh, talk to her, communicate with her that way. Um, she's, you know, been very willing to help people and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks for your time today, Nadine. No problem. Thank you, Nadine. Thanks. Thanks Thank for you very much. much. Thank you. All right. Bye, everybody. Uh, all right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. And I'll send an email here in a little bit. After I stop recording. There we go.